Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to knit a top-down raglan cardigan. So first we need to make sure we've got everything we need to make the cardigan. Um, so yarn, you need yarn. So I am using Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick Yarn and this is sky blue. This is the color sky blue and this is considered a super bulky weight yarn. And um, we are going to be knitting a cardigan. So it's best to use circular needles, long circular needles, because the work will grow to be pretty wide as we continue the raglan increases. Um, so I am using US 17 knitting needles. These are pretty big needles. And if this is the first time you're knitting um, a cardigan like this, I really suggest using thicker yarn and bigger needles because it's just easier to manipulate. It's easier to see the stitches. It's easier to count stitches and see the increases. Um, and then you'll be using 16 inch, the same size, 16 inch circular needles. So we'll use those later for the sleeves. But to get started, you just need the longer 40 inch needles, the yarn, and you will need four stitch markers. It doesn't matter what color they are here because it's easier. We're not knitting in the round, we're knitting back and forth flat. Um, so these are just the stitch markers that I had handy. Um, and then I just do have scissors so I can easily cut yarn. So when we get started here, um, we are gonna cast on um, and I'm showing you how to knit this, the way I'm knitting this top down cardigan, um, applies to any top down knitted cardigan. You know, this pattern is available to you guys for free, so you'll have access to it. Um, but this video will help you understand overall how to knit a top down raglan cardigan, even if you aren't necessarily using my specific pattern. All right, so let's get started. All right. So for this pattern, we're gonna cast on 32 stitches. So we're gonna use the long tail cast on method to cast on 32 stitches. So I am just getting my yarn ready here, getting to the end. And here we go. All right, so just make sure you leave enough of a long tail to cast on 32 stitches. So I'm getting ready to cast on. This is the way I make my slip knot. There are many different ways to make a slip knot. This is just the way I was taught. Some people might say this is difficult, this is the difficult way, but this is just the way I do it. I um, make the yarn look like a pretzel and I one loop over, a loop behind, and I've got a pretzel. And I go over the first two loops and under the third loop and pull. So that's how I make my slip knot. Again, there are many different ways to make slip knots. That's just how I do it. I will show you guys one more time. Loop over, bring it behind. I'll do it, try to do it a little bit bigger so you can see. So there's my pretzel over the first two loops, under the third loop, and then I pull. All right, so when you do the long tail cast on, you wanna make sure the long tail, the end is in front here. And the, the piece of yarn that's attached to the skein is behind you. So now I'm gonna show you how to grab the yarn and cast on a total of 32 stitches. So the first, the slip knot counts as the first stitch. So I'm going to grab the yarn like this. I put my index finger in between, thumb on top, third finger at the end, and I grab like this, sorry. Thumb behind like this, and then you're gonna just grab the yarn, okay? So you grab the yarn like this. Again, that long tail is in the front here, and you're gonna twist the yarn, grab it, come underneath, turn it, Go over the loop that's over your index finger and pull it through. Okay, so that's two stitches. We're casting on 32. I'll do this again slowly. Come in, grab the yarn. So I have it, my thumb and my index finger like this. And then I'm just 
holding the yarn with my three fingers behind. And then you just need to be able to turn the yarn. Okay, so come in, grab it, and we're gonna go under the yarn that's around the thumb and over the yarn by the index finger and just pull it through. Okay, so that's three stitches that we've cast on so far. Under, over, pull it through. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. 10. So we've got 10 stitches on and just wanted to give you a little note here. You don't want to pull this, the slip stitches too tight. Try to keep it consistent. Um, and I'd say, you know, you don't want it to be crazy, crazy tight, like medium here. So we've got two, four, six, eight, ten 10 stitches on 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, Alright, so we've got our 32 stitches cast on here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32 stitches. Alright, so if you're looking at this cast on row here, um, this is actually the right side of the work. And I just wanted to take a little bit of time now just to explain um, how we'll be working. So we've cast on this nice long tail cast on. Um, we are using long circular needles, however, we are knitting back and forth, which means we'll be knitting on the right side, and then we'll be flipping the work over and working back on the wrong side. Okay, so because we just cast on, we cast on on the right side, and now we're going to be flipping this over and working on the wrong side of the work. So right side is abbreviated RS, and wrong side is abbreviated WS. And so um, usually in this pattern that I'm following, this is what we call a setup row now. So we're going to be working on the wrong side of the work and also placing markers. PM stands for place marker. M stands for marker. We're going to be placing the markers to let us know where we are going to be doing the raglan increases. All right. So in this particular pattern, um, we need to purl one. It says purl one and then place marker. So we are going to be doing that. So make sure we're done casting on, make sure that tail is out of the way and you're working with the yarn that is attached to the skein. Okay, so I'm going to take my needle now and purl one. So we're gonna purl one, it says P1 and then PM. So P1 means purl one, and then PM means place marker. Okay. So we've got P1, place marker, PM, and then it says to purl six, and then place the next marker. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So we're going to place the marker now. All right. Then it says purl 18. 
Okay, so we're gonna purl across 18 stitches now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Place the marker. And then it says purl, um, purl across six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Place marker, PM, and then purl one, the last stitch. Okay. So... Now's a good time to make sure you have everything set up correctly with the number of stitches. Um, so it should be one, one stitch, then a marker, six stitches, then a marker, 18 stitches, then a marker, six stitches, and a marker, and one stitch. All right, so let me just explain to you a little bit about each section. So we're done knitting, purling across the wrong side. So we're gonna flip the work now. We're going to flip the work over, and I just want to take a second to explain to you what these different sections are between the markers. It's, a, it, you, it's really helpful to visualize what you're knitting um, so you understand how the pattern comes together. So I'm going to show you this. It's, it's essentially upside down, right? So we are going to be working up, essentially. This is the top of the collar, okay? And we're gonna be working back and forth, making increases. So this is an open cardigan. So there aren't too many stitches in the front. This is actually the left front. This will be, this will grow, and this will become the part of the sweater that sits on your left front. So when you hear an, when you hear someone, a knitwear designer or in a pattern talk about the left front, the left front is, the side of the sweater when you have it on. So imagine yourself having this on, on your left side, okay? And then, we'll go across this way here. Um, then you knit across the left sleeve. This will grow and become the left sleeve, okay? So you have the left front, left sleeve. This is across the back. That longer section is across the back. And then you make your way to the right sleeve. These six stitches are the right sleeve. And then this one stitch will grow and become the right front. So you knit like this. We're kind of upside down like this. You'll knit across this way. And all of these different pieces will grow. So how do they grow? They grow by making increases. Increases on either side of the stitch marker as you go, either side, okay? And you will, in this pattern, we're only making increases when we're working on the right side of the garment. So again, we worked the first long tail cast, on, we worked the long tail cast on was the first row of the right side. We worked purl stitches and placed the markers on the wrong side and now we're back on the right side and we're ready to make our first row of raglan increases. So in this pattern um, and what's typical of sweater patterns um, generally is that you will have four stitch markers and you're going to make an increase on either side of the stitch marker. So we will have a total of eight increases on every right side row and then we will just be purling on the wrong side. So it's kind of easy to tell where you are, um, you know, if it's a raglan increase row or just a purl row because you, you know when you're on the wrong side or the right side of the work. So again, we'll be making eight raglan increases on every right side row, and then we'll just purl back on the wrong side. 
So I will show you how this goes here. So we're gonna actually just make our first increase right away because we don't have any other stitches. The pattern just says knit front and back, slip marker, knit front and back. So we're going to be knitting in the front and back. Is just insert, I'll show you how to knit in the front and the back. Um, all right. So this is an increase stitch. We're knitting in the front and then pulling up. And instead of pulling everything off, we're gonna turn and knit a stitch into the back. I'm trying to show you this here. Okay, so I've got two stitches now instead of just one, and we're gonna pull it off. Okay, so we've increased one stitch. Now we're going to slip the marker, and we're gonna knit in the front and the back again. Knit in the front, and turn it, and knit in the back. Okay. I'll slow down the knit in the front and the back again when we get to the next one. All right, so now the pattern says, knit to one stitch before the next marker. So the pattern said knit front and back, slip marker, knit front and back. And now we're going to knit all the way till one stitch before the next marker. So that means we're knitting across four stitches here and then we'll stop and we'll do our raglan increase right in front of that stitch that's by the marker. So we're gonna knit across these four stitches. One, two, three, four. Okay, and now we're going to knit one in the front and back. Knit one front and in the back. Okay. Slip marker, and I'll do this really slowly. You go in as if to knit, wrap your yarn over, okay, Pull it through, and instead of pulling this stitch off, you keep it on. And we're gonna turn and put the needle through the yarn in the back, yarn over, and there you've increased a stitch. All right, so, so far we've knitted across the left front, the left sleeve, and now we're working across the back. So the pattern won't necessarily give you a stitch count every single row, right? So. Um, it'll say slip marker, knit one front and the back, knit to one stitch before the next marker, knit one front and the back, slip marker, knit one front and back. We're going to be working the same way across to the end. All right. So now we're going to knit all the way to the next marker. One stitch before the next marker, excuse me. All right, so we have knit to one stitch before the next marker. We're gonna knit one in the front and in the back. Slip the marker, knit one in the front and in the back. Knit to the marker again. Knit one in the front and in the back. Slip the marker. And our last stitch is knit one in the front and the back. So it, we're mirroring, each side mirrors each other, right? Because the sweater will be symmetrical, right? So we've just finished our first raglan increase row. So if we started with 32 stitches and we did one raglan increase row, we will have increased eight stitches, two, four, six, eight. So we should have 40 stitches now. So now's a good time just to double check your stitch count and make sure you have 40 stitches. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40.
Okay, so we're good to go. So we just finished our first raglan increase row with eight, stitch, eight stitches. I do wanna take some time just to explain. There are many different ways to increase stitches. So if you're using another pattern and they have you increase a different way, like um, a left lifted increase and a right lifted increase or a make one right, a make one left, the same concept applies. Um, so in this pattern, we're doing the increase on the stitch right next to the marker. Some patterns have you do the increases in different locations or do the increases in a different kind of stitch. Um, I just wanted to take some time to, to explain that this is just one way of doing the raglan increases. I do find that knitting one in the front and the back is kind of a good way um, to first um, learn how to do a raglan sweater. So we are going to, so the first um, raglan increase row, we knitted one in the front and back right away. Um, I'm gonna explain how the pattern's written moving forward. But first, we need to purl across the wrong side of the work, making sure we have that long tail out of the way. So again, this is the wrong side of the work. You can see that these are all purl stitches on the wrong side. These are all knit stitches on the right side. You can start seeing this come together. So I'm just gonna purl across the wrong side now. All right, so now we've finished our pearl row. All right, so the first, we just completed row one and row two. So now we're on row three. So we had our long tail cast on, which is the cast on row. And then we had our setup row, which is where we placed all the markers. Row one was when we did our first raglan increases and row two was purling that I just finished. So now we're on row three. And row three in this pattern, um, basically the instructions are repeated um, throughout the rest of the increase rows. So this the, the instructions say K to first one stitch before M, knit one front and back, SM, knit one front and back, and then you're gonna repeat that three more times and then knit to end. So that's what the pattern reads and I just wanna explain what that actually means. K to one ST before M means knit to one stitch before marker. And there is an asterisk there at the beginning, um, which means that the instructions within those asterisks are repeated. So. This means now we're working on the right side of the work. I'm just gonna talk you through what we're doing again and what the pattern says. It says, 
knit to one stitch before the marker. So we're gonna be knitting to one stitch before the marker, which on this row is just one stitch. But we'll be growing this, so those instructions will still apply. So on this row, we're only knitting one stitch, but on the next row, raglan and crease row, there'll be two stitches here, then three, then four, then five. So um, the instructions are just written so that you can continue to follow those same instructions even though the stitches are growing. So it's knit to one stitch before the marker, knit one front and back, slip the marker, knit one front and back. Then it says, knit to one stitch before the marker, knit one front and back, slip marker, knit one front and back, knit to next. So it's all repeated. So there's one set of instructions and then you're gonna repeat that three times to get you all the way to here. And then you're gonna just knit to the end. So again, we're on our third row we're going to be doing another raglan increase row because we're on the right side of the work. We see our stockinette on this side. We're going to be doing eight increases again. So we have 40 stitches on our work now. At the end, we should have 48 stitches. So I'm gonna show you one more time how to do a raglan increase row. Knit to one stitch before the marker, which we just did. Knit one front and back. We have one increase there, okay? Slip marker, knit one front and back. Another increase, knit to one stitch before the marker. So now we're knitting across the left sleeve. One stitch before the marker, knit one front and back. Okay, slip marker. Knit one front and back. Now we're knitting across the back. Knit to one stitch before the next marker. So we're knitting one front and back because we're one stitch before that next marker. Okay, we're gonna slip the marker. Now we're working across that right sleeve. Knit one front and back. Okay, now we're gonna work across the right sleeve and stop one stitch before the next marker. All right, one stitch before the next marker. Okay, knit one front and back. Slip the marker, knit one front and back, and then it just says knit to end. So in this case, we only have one stitch here, but again, as you continue to grow the raglan sweater, you'll have more stitches. So we're just knitting to the end here, which is just one stitch in this case. Okay, so now we just completed row three. So we've made two raglan increase rows and we have, um, you can see that we are starting to kind of expand here. Um, and as you continue the raglan increases, you'll be able to see how the work spans out. Now, depending on what size you're making of the sweater, um, you'll have different numbers of raglan increases. So. I'm gonna work back, so we just completed a row three. I'm gonna work back on row four, which is just turning the work and purling now. And we just slip the markers along the way. So while I'm doing this, I just wanna explain. So in this pattern, you're gonna be continuing to repeat rows three, so the row we just did, and this row, row four, for a certain number of times, so that you have a certain number of stitches. So depending on what size you're making, the pattern 
will tell you how many more times to repeat rows three and this row, row four. And I'm gonna show you here how to count how many raglan increases you've done when we're finished here. So think of row three and row four as a unit, right? It's one row on the right side of raglan increases, and then on the wrong side, you're just purling back. So different sizes call for you to repeat row three and four um, a different number of times because we're creating different sizes. So the less number of raglan increases, the smaller the cardigan. The more increases, the larger the cardigan. And when you're knitting raglan sweaters, what's nice is that you can kind of customize your size if need be. You can see how wide the sweater is and figure out how wide you need it to be. Now, typically, you know, the instructions are written well and you can just follow the instructions for the size you need. But if you want it to be, you know, a little different, you can figure out how many raglan increase rows you want, depending on how wide you want the sweater to be. All right, so I just wanted to take a second now to show you where we are and kind of explain to you how you can see how many raglan increases you've done. So if you take a look here, with the knit one in the front and in back stitch, um, you get this little, I'll call it a nub here, but that's when you twist it. So when you twist the stitch to expand it. So what's nice when you do the knit one in the front and the back, you can see we've made one, two raglan increases. So you can just visually kind of see how many raglan increases you've done to keep track of your rows. So one increase, two increase right there. All right, I'll show you in a different area. So this is between the left sleeve and the back. One increase, two increase. I usually start, it's best to start from the collar up. So one increase, two increase. So we have two raglan increase rows done and we're back on the right side of the work. So now it's all about repeating rows three and four, what we just did, the specific number of times the pattern calls for, for the size you are following. All right, so the sweater is starting, the cardigan is starting to grow. So I just wanted to kind of explain where we are here and show you what it starts to look like as you continue to make those increases. So again, I've just finished a wrong side row, um, a purl row, and I have um, five stitches um, on the left front, and um, I should have the same number of stitches on the right front, so five and five. Um, so again, the number of stitches on this side and this side should be the same because we want the sweater to be symmetrical. So this is the left front, the left sleeve, the back, the right sleeve, and the right front. So as we start to grow, you can see that everything is getting wider. The sleeves are getting wider, the fronts are getting bigger, the back is wider. Um, so again, just to check how many raglan increases you've done you can take the work and count those little notches in the stitches so you'll start to get this like one kind of stitch that's um it looks like a, a knit a knit stitch um that starts to appear on either side of the marker um and then your increases are right on the other side those kind of little notches, okay? So that's where you've done your increase. It's kind of like the middle, and then you've got increases on this side. So in this case, we've done one, two, three, four raglan increase 
rows. So just to kind of do some math here so you can check where you are. So on a sleeve, this is the right sleeve, we started with six stitches. So if we've done four increases and we've got an increase on either side of the sleeve, we should have eight additional stitches. So four times two, because we have increases on both sides, is eight. So six plus eight is 14. So we should have 14 stitches for the sleeve. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. So we're good to go there. And I'm just gonna check the left sleeve to make sure, again, four raglan increases, so on either side, so that's eight stitches we've increased and we started with six stitches. So six plus eight is 14. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. So we're good on the sleeve. Now to check the fronts, we've done four increases, one, two, three, four, but we're only making one increase on the left front and the right front. So there should only be four more stitches and we started with one stitch. So one plus four is five. So we have five stitches on either side. To check the back, the back we started with 18 stitches or again, just apply this to whatever stitches you started with. Um, so we had 18 stitches and we've done four increases on this side, four increases on that side. So that's eight more stitches total. Four plus four is eight and we started with 18. So 18 plus eight is 26. So we should have 26 stitches now along the back. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. So we're all good. So that's kind of just a good way to check and see if your stitch count is good as you continue along. It can be frustrating to work all of your increases and figure out that you're off a couple stitches. So it's good every couple rows just to double check. Sometimes the, the pattern won't always tell you what the stitch count is on every row, um, and nor should it. You should be able to figure out um, kind of where you are along the way, and then the pattern should just kind of give you a guide at the most important parts. But it's good to just understand the math, how everything works. Um, so again, just wanted to show you what this looks like after four increase rows. So now I just want to show you guys what the sweater is looking like as I've continued on. Um, I just wanted to show you how many increases we've done and then we can see where, we're, where we are. So we've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight increases, eight increase rows. All right. So after eight increase rows, we've started off with one in the front. So one plus eight is nine. We should have nine stitches on either side. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Two, four, six, eight, nine. So we're good on the left front and the right front. On the sleeves, we started off with six stitches and we have made eight increase rows on either side. So eight plus eight is 16 plus the original six stitches. So that's 22 stitches I should have on each side. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. On the left, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22 stitches on this side. All right, and that's the right side. And then on the back, we started off with 18. So 18 stitches plus eight on either side. 18 plus 16 is 34. So let's see if we've got that going here. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. We are good to go. All right, so you can see that the sweater, again, is starting to get bigger. It's starting to look a little bit more like a sweater. So we're gonna continue to increase um, to the number of increases that the pattern calls for. All right, so now I'm at the point where I've completed the number of raglan increases 
that I'm supposed to complete. Um, so I've completed 11 raglan increases. You can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So again, I'm just counting the little notches. So you can count how many raglan increases you've completed. So this is a great time to double check your stitch count to make sure you have the correct number of stitches. So the pattern should tell you how many you should have on the left front, the left sleeve, the back, the right sleeve, and the right front. So in this case, for the size I'm knitting, I need 12 stitches on the left and right fronts, 22 stitches on the left and right sleeves, and 40 stitches in the back. So I am there. All right, so now is the point when you divide for the body. And dividing for the body means that it is time to separate out the sleeves. So we know that this is our left sleeve and this is our right sleeve. And we are going to be basically placing the sleeve stitches on scrap yarn so we can just work back and forth around the body. And this is the point when your sweater actually starts to really look like a sweater. So after you divide for the body, your sweater will look a lot more like a sweater. So just to explain what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna knit across the left front, remove the marker, cast on new stitches for the underarm. Typically, you when you knit a sweater or a pull, oh, like a pullover or a cardigan, you'll add stitches to allow for some space at the underarm. This just makes the sweater fit a little more comfortable. Um, you don't have to, not every, it's not like you have to have them, but typically you will see them. It just helps the sweater to fit a little bit better. And then you'll knit across the back and then you'll place the right sleeve stitches on a, a piece of scrap yarn and you will knit the right front. So what will happen is that the left front will join together to meet the back and these stitches will come off, the sleeve stitches will come off. So I'll show you exactly how we will do that. All right, so it says under the instructions for divide for body, you're going to knit to the marker. Okay, so let's knit to the marker, the very first marker. So right now, again, we're knitting across the left front. All right, so once we get to the marker, we're going to slip the marker off and then it says to cast on two stitches for my size at the underarm. So the easiest way when you're just starting, there's many different ways you can cast on stitches. The easiest way to cast on stitches is the backwards loop method. And I will show you how to cast on two stitches the backwards loop method, okay? We're gonna take the yarn, twist it, so there's a loop that's backwards, and we're going to slip it on the needle, okay? So when you, it's twisted so that this yarn, this piece of yarn is coming out this way. We don't want the yarn loose. So let me take that off and show you guys again. So you twist it and slip it on again so that the yarn is this way on the needle. So we're gonna cast on two stitches so I need to do it one more time, okay? And there's lots of other videos out there that show you how to do the backwards cast on, backwards loop cast on. So we have two stitches, so that's how many stitches we're casting on for the underarm, okay? Now we're gonna place the left sleeve stitches, all of these stitches, up to the next marker on a piece of scrap yarn. So take a piece of scrap yarn. I typically like to make the piece of scrap yarn a different color um, and more like a little more than twice the size of the sleeve. You wanna have a lot of extra yarn because the stitches are just gonna be hanging out. Um, on this piece of yarn until we knit those. So you're gonna wanna take a tapestry needle 
and um, get loop the piece of yarn through the tapestry needle. You'll need a thick one for um, for the super bulky weight yarn. It can be tricky to get this yarn all the way through as I'm already showing you guys. All right, so I've got the yarn through the tapestry needle and we're simply going to remove these left sleeve stitches. So all the stitches up to the next marker, um, we're gonna put them all on this piece of scrap yarn by slipping all of these stitches off the needle and onto this piece of scrap yarn. So I typically kind of push them all off and start pulling them down onto the piece of scrap yarn like this. Oh, make sure you don't miss any. There we go. All right, so again, I'm just getting all of these stitches that were on the left sleeve onto this piece of scrap yarn. All right, so we're gonna remove this, remove the marker, make sure you keep, well, lost some stitches here. Make sure you keep the sleeve stitches that are supposed to be on the sleeve on there. All right, so I've pulled the yarn through. And I just like to, I pull the tapestry needle off, set that aside, because you'll need to use it again for the other sleeve. And then I just kind of um, loosen up this yarn, make sure it, the scrap yarn's kind of in the middle here, um, and spread it out so it's kind of flat. So again, this is your left sleeve. So we are putting these stitches on a placeholder, because we're gonna be knitting this later for the sleeve. So we just, this is just a holder, for us to work the body and then we will come back and work the sleeve. So once you've cast on your two stitches, put all the left sleeve stitches on a piece of waist yarn, you're gonna bring the right needle over to the left needle and keep knitting across the back. So we're joining the work, we're joining the work together here and we're gonna just keep knitting across the back. Now it can be kind of loose here um, we're going to go back and tighten up the work later um, with a piece of scrap yarn at the underarm. Sometimes you can get some underarm gaps. There's lots of different tricks and ways to knit sleeves to reduce those gaps when you're just getting started. I think it's easier just to knit through and then use a piece of scrap yarn at the end and a tapestry needle to close up any of those gaps. All right, so now we're just going to knit across the back to the next marker. And that next marker is where the right sleeve is.
All right, so we're nearing where the right sleeve is. So I'm going to remove the marker, cast on two stitches with the backwards loop method. One, two. I'm going to weave my yarn through a tapestry needle and put those right sleeve stitches on a piece of scrap yarn. All right, so same thing we did before. We're gonna put all of these right sleeve stitches on a piece of scrap yarn. So we're just gonna start taking them off with the needle one by one and slipping them on this piece of scrap yarn. All right, so we're gonna go all the way over to that next marker, which is the start of the right front. I'm gonna remove that marker. We're gonna pull the scrap yarn all the way through, take off the tapestry needle, get these sleeve stitches situated on here comfortably. Okay, and now we're gonna bring the work together. So we're gonna connect the back, to the right front, and now we're just gonna knit to the end. Join the work together and knit to the end. All right, so we are now done with dividing for the body. So I'll show you what this looks like. All right, so we have connected the front to the back. Ooh, excuse me. We've connected the front and the back and placed the sleeve stitches on the stitch on the scrap yarn. So you'll be working back and forth. The sweater is currently upside down. Um, you'll be working back and forth. I'll turn it around so you can kind of visually see what's going on here. Um, but we've got the front of the sweater, the sleeve, we've got the back, the other front, and the other sleeve. So that is what the sweater looks like after you have divided for the body. Now the sweater says to work a stockinette stitch and row one is purl to end. So we're starting a new section here. We're starting um, to work the body. And so row, row one, we're on the wrong side of the work. So when we divided for the body, we completed that on the right side of the work. We were doing the knit stitch. And now we are on the wrong side of the work. So we are going to purl to continue on with stock and net stitch. So it says to work stock and net stitch or to repeat rows one and two until the piece measures about um, 12 and a half inches from the underarm or however desired length. And then when we knit the um, ribbing at the bottom, that will add um, three inches. So we are gonna work back and forth. This is, this is the easy part of the sweater, just working the body back and forth. So you're gonna purl, and I'll show you what it looks like to purl across this here. And I am also just noting, too, that I am nearing the end of my first skein of yarn. So when I get to that point, I will show you how I join the second skein of yarn. So yeah, at this point, I've only used one skein of yarn for um, almost all of the raglan yoke part here. All right, so I just wanna show you what it'll look like to purl across this, cause it can be a little confusing cause we've got our cast on, our underarm cast on stitches. Okay, 
So note that I don't have any markers on the work right now. There is no need. Sometimes you'll have to put markers in the middle of the cast on stitches to note where the sides are, if you do any decreases or increases along the sides. But this sweater is written um, so that there aren't any increases or decreases. So right now we don't have any markers on the work. So we are gonna work back in pearls we're gonna pearl our way back on the wrong side of the work now so we'll just work normally here and I just want to show you what it looks like to pearl on those cast on stitches because that can be a little confusing All right, so it, get, it can get a little loose here, but that's okay. So I'm gonna purl that last stitch, and then these are my two cast on stitches. Be careful to not pull these off, okay? So we're gonna just knit, or we're gonna purl through them just as if they were a normal stitch. They might look a little bit looser, like I said, than the other stitches, but you still purl. You're gonna get a larger gap here when you move on to the next stitch. Don't worry about that. We can close up any gaps later on. So just continue to purl. Now I do knit and purl kind of continental style, which means I do my yarn over on my left hand. Some people do the yarn over using their right hand, but everything that I'm teaching you still applies. So even though you may yarn over, yarn over, that's what I mean by yarn over, with my left hand, um, it doesn't mean that you need to do anything else differently. Everybody knits differently. So yeah, as you can see, these cast on stitches might look a little funny and you might think you've done something wrong, um, but don't worry. They'll start to look more normal as you continue to work the body. All right, so I am almost over to the other cast on stitches on the other side. Sorry guys, getting lost some of the stitches here. It can happen, just put them back on. Trying to bunch everything together so it fits on the camera a little bit better, but. Okay, so I'm purling across to those other stitches. All right, so. Again, this might look a little funny. Those are the two cast on stitches. So just be careful that you don't drop them. You purl them exactly as you would a regular stitch. Just be careful not to have them slip off the needles. One, two, and then you just keep purling across. Purl to the end. So this is stuck in that stitch. So knitting on the right side and purling on the wrong side creates the stuck in that stitch. And the stuck in that stitch is kind of just like the classic knit stitch. All right, so as you can see, we're starting to work those underarm stitches. So now 
you're just going to continue working those stockinette stitches until you get to that desired length or the length that the pattern calls for to work the stitch. So when you measure, when it says to um, repeat or to work stockinette stitch for 12 and a half inches from the underarm, you'll be measuring it from the underarm from where you cast on those stitches down here. So I'm gonna continue to work stockinette stitch, knitting on the right side, purling on the wrong side for another couple of inches, and then I will check back in with you. I wanted to show you how to join your work. So when you're near the end of the skein of yarn that you're working with, make sure you leave enough yarn to allow you to knit about three stitches and then have some yarn left over. So in this case, it's, I don't know, maybe about 10 inches or so. And then I'm gonna get um, the end of the yarn from my next skein. And I'm going to leave about, I don't know, maybe four or five inches here, connect it to the base of the yarn that was already on the needles. So I'm going to double up the yarn. So I'm leaving a tail here, holding both pieces of yarn together. Okay, so I've got a tail here from the new end and then the tail over here from the old end. So both pieces of yarn are together and I'm gonna knit them together for three stitches. One, two, three. And that is the easiest way to join the work. You're gonna let go of the yarn. This is the extra, the end of the old yarn. The new yarn is now joined and you've got the end of the new, of the new yarn at the beginning. And they've been knitted together for three stitches. And so then at the end, you can just trim, trim the ends. There's lots of different ways to join. That's the way I like to join because you don't need to do a lot of weaving in of ends because you already kind of wove everything together by knitting the two pieces of yarn together. So continue on knitting now with the new piece of yarn and just drop those other pieces. So they'll look, it'll look like that in the back. And then when you go to purl, you'll just work those double stitches as one stitch. Just make sure you treat them as one stitch. So that's one stitch, that's one stitch, and that's one stitch. All right. So I just wanted to show you once you come up back to where you've joined the yarn and you're on that purl side or if you're on the knit side, it applies the same way. Um, but you'll see my double stitches. Just make sure you knit them as one. You don't want to end up increasing your stitches. So you might be knitting them or you might be purling them, but just try to make sure you keep track and you treat those double stitches as one stitch. All right, so I wanted to show you guys how the sweater is looking as you continue to knit on the right side and purl on the wrong side. So the sweater will start to grow in length from the underarm. So it's good to start measuring so you know how much longer you need to continue the stockinette stitch as you knit. So I'm at about four inches from the underarm. Um, and so the pattern calls for continuing it for 12 and a half inches. So I am about a third of the way there. So I'm gonna continue on. All right, so I have finished knitting the body of the sweater. The pattern for the size that I am knitting calls for me to knit about 12 and a half inches from the underarm. So I'm going to measure this and show you guys that I am at the point where it's time for me to do my bottom ribbing. So I am at about 12 and a half inches from the underarm. So now it's time for us to work the one by one rib. And one by one rib means you are going to knit a stitch, purl a stitch, knit a stitch, purl a stitch, all the way across the bottom of the work. Some patterns will have you switch to a smaller needle size than what you use to knit 
the body. Um, smaller needle size creates a tighter um, gauge and sometimes sweaters just like the bottom to fit a little tighter. For um, ease here, we're gonna keep the same needle size. I personally like to knit in the same size, do the rib in the same um, needle size. I don't like my this, the bottoms of my sweater to, to get a lot tighter. It'll get tighter naturally, just in the knit one, purl one. And we, we do this bottom ribbing to prevent um, the sweater from curling up. It's just kind of a way to finish the sweater. All right, so um, I'm going to show you what a knit one, purl one rib looks like. And when we, um, when we look at the pattern, it says that we need to finish after a wrong side row when we're, when we're done working that stock and that stitch. So we need to complete a wrong side row and then begin the knit one, purl one on the right side of the work. All right. So I'm going to show you what a knit one, purl one rib looks like. And then when on the right side, we'll be knitting one, purling one. And then when we turn it over, we'll be knitting the knit stitches and purling the purl stitches. So let me show you what this looks like. You're going to knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. knit one, purl one. And if you put your work down and you come back to it and you're like, wait a minute, I don't know if I should be knitting one or purling one, you can tell the purl stitches are the ones with the little, um, you can see the stitch, like the little nub here. So that's a purl stitch, that's a purl stitch, that's a purl stitch, that's a purl stitch. So my last stitch was a purl stitch, so I know I need to knit. So we're gonna just continue this all the way across. Knit, purl, knit, purl. All right, so I am nearing the end of my first row of knit one, purl one. All right, and you should end on a purl stitch because there are an even number of stitches on the body. When there are an even number of stitches, you're going to end on a different stitch that you started with. When there's an odd number of stitches, you're gonna end on the same stitch you started with. All right, so we finished our first row of knit one, purl one. You can see my last stitch is a purl. So we're gonna flip it over. All right, so when you flip work the work over, the purl stitches become knit stitches and the knit stitches become purl stitches. So we're going to just continue the knit one, purl one, because when you have an even number of stitches and you flip it over, you continue the knit one, purl one. Knit, purl, knit, purl. All right. Stitches are reversed when you flip them over. So just keep in mind, just the easiest way to remember this is follow the pattern. Because we have an even number of stitches, it's knit one, purl one on the right side, and knit one, purl one on the wrong side. All right, so I'm just gonna continue to knit one, purl one on the wrong side. And the sweater pattern tells us to continue this ribbing, this one by one ribbing, or knit one, purl one, for three inches ending after a wrong side row. 
So when we are done working a wrong side, this side, we're gonna stop and then I will show you how to bind off. So I'm gonna continue on this Knit One Pearl one here for three inches and then I will show you how to bind off. All right, so now I have completed my one by one rib, my Knit One Pearl one rib for the bottom of the sweater for three and a half inches. And for me, that was um, 10 rows. So I've ended on, um, I've ended after a wrong side. So now I am at the right, on the right side of the work and we're gonna bind off in the one by one rib. So binding off is knitting and also um, dropping off a stitch as we go so that we can, we basically um, take the yarn off and finish the work. So I will show you what binding off in a one by one rib looks like. And you wanna bind off kind of loosely. This is one way to bind off. Um, this is kind of like the standard bind off. And there's, again, there's many different ways to bind off. This is the easiest one. Um, and I just like the way this looks, but you do want to keep it um, a bit loose because if it's very tight, the sweater will pull together at the bottom. So we're going to continue by knitting one stitch, going to continue in the pattern. So we will continue to knit one purl one, but there's a few extra steps. So we're going to knit one, take the yarn off the needle, purl one. And when we have two stitches on the right hand needle, we will slip the first stitch over the second stitch. So we're gonna put our needle into the first stitch and pull it off by pulling it over the one stitch that's on. So now, we've have, now we have one stitch on that right hand needle. So we're gonna continue on by knitting one, and slipping that first stitch over the stitch we just completed. I'm gonna slip that off. So now we have bound off two stitches. So the next stitch is a purl stitch. So we're gonna purl. Make sure again, you keep it kind of loose. We're gonna slip that first stitch over the next stitch. So we bind off another stitch. And as you can start to see, we have a nice bind off edge going along here. So we're gonna continue knitting and purling and slipping that first stitch over the next stitch on the right hand side. So you will always start with two stitches, but end with one stitch. And you continue doing this all the way across the bottom of the work. Curling, binding off. Now I'm gonna knit and bind off. Purl, bind off, knit, bind off. All right, so we're gonna look at how nice and neat that looks. And we just keep going all the way across. All right, so now I just wanna show you what it looks like. I've got three stitches left. Um, so I am gonna to continue to bind off until I have one stitch left. So we're gonna continue the knit one, purl one, bind off. And when I've got one stitch left on the needle, I'm simply going to cut it 
leave enough room to weave in the ends there. I don't know, this is probably about five inches or so. And then you simply pull the yarn all the way through. All right. And now we have bound off all of our stitches for the body. All right, now it's time for the sleeves and you're gonna follow these same instructions for both of the sleeves. So we've finished um, the body and now we are going to complete knitting both of our sleeves. Let me turn this around here so you can see what our sweater is looking like at the moment. All right, so we've got the bottom done and we've got our sleeves, both of our sleeves now, ready to go. So again, it doesn't matter which sleeve you start with. Let's just start with this guy over here. Um, so to do, to complete your sleeve, you are going to need um, 16 inch US 17 knitting needles. I am showing you how to use um, the circular knitting needles instead of double pointed needles. Double pointed needles look like this. If you are comfortable knitting with double pointed needles, feel free. Sometimes you don't have um, the short of a circular knitting needle. I find it's very, it's um, much more simple to knit using 16 inch knitting needles. So again, you're gonna, you're knitting the sleeves in the same size needles as you knit the body. The, the length of the cord on the circular needle is just much shorter so you can knit in the round. So we are going to knit in the round. If you haven't knit in the round before, don't be intimidated. I am going to show you step by step how to knit in the round. And once you figure it out, it is so easy. It's very fast. And again, like I said, you'll be able to knit up these sleeves in no time with these circular needles. So the first step when we knit sleeves is to get all of our stitches that are on this waist yarn back onto needles. And we're gonna put them on these needles. And then remember when we cast on um, those stitches for the underarm, we're gonna pick up stitches and join in the round. So first step, let's get all of these stitches off of the scrap yarn. And I do that simply by slipping my yarn or my needle through. And if it's too thick, you can start to pull the yarn as you go, pull the yarn out as you go, or you can kind of pull it all at the end. I tend to um, pull the yarn out every couple of stitches because I'm using some thick yarn here as my scrap yarn. So you just keep working around picking up these stitches off the scrap yarn and making sure you're pulling the yarn out as you go, or again, like I said, you can do it at the end. So you work all the way around Putting these stitches back on the needle and you can just kind of slide the stitches here. So this is also a good time to make sure you have the right number of sleeve stitches. So um, we ended up with 22 for the size I'm knitting, 22 stitches. And then we cast on two at the underarm. So the total sleeve stitches should be 24 stitches. All right, so I am nearing the end here and it can be tricky to get the last stitch off. You just need to pull the yarn up 
and see that same, you make sure you put your needle through that same loop that the yarn is on. It can, and it can be just be really tight because we're at the end here. So you just want to make sure you're putting this, the correct number of stitches on and the right yarn and the right stitch on. Okay, so I'm pulling the rest out. This is a good time, like I said, to count your stitches that you've got on the needle and then we'll make sure we, we um, pick up those stitches. So I've got all of my sleeve stitches back on this needle. Let's count here, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 20, wait a minute. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. I'm sorry, we started with six stitches. So 22, we did um, we did 11 raglan increases. So it's 22, um, 22 stitches plus six because we started with six on the sleeve. So it's 28 stitches. And then we're gonna pick up um, two stitches at the underarm. So that looks like this. We're gonna take um, our yarn that we're gonna be knitting the sleeves with and we are going to join the yarn here on the right side. And you can see where we've cast on these two stitches. So we're gonna leave a little bit of yarn so we can weave it in and close up any gaps at the underarm, but we're gonna pick up two stitches, one, two. And we also need to place the marker in between those two stitches to denote the beginning and end of the round. So typically you place your stitch marker in the center of the underarm. Now, if you have an uneven number of cast on stitches at the underarm, you can go as close to the middle as you can. So we're doing lots of things at once here. We're joining our yarn. We're picking up two stitches in the underarm. So I go through this first loop and the back loop at the same time. Okay, so there's actually gonna be um, two stitches, I guess you want to call them, on the yarn, and we're going to pull this through. So this is called picking up and knitting, okay? So that's one stitch. We're going to place our stitch marker because we have two cast-on stitches, and we need to place the marker in the center of the cast-on, and I'm going to pick up the next stitch and yarn over and pull the yarn through. That is called picking up and knitting, that abbreviation is P-U-K, picking up and knitting. And now we are ready to knit the sleeves in the round. Now you will have some gaps here and we can go back with our scrap yarn and um, close up the underarm gap. Again, there are many different techniques that different knitters use to close up gaps. I think when you're just starting to knit, it's easiest to um, just sew up the gaps at the end, seam them up at the end. So make sure you're using um, your the yarn attached to the rest of the skein instead of the scrap yarn. And let's make sure, whoops, let's make sure we keep our stitches on the needle. You've got a lot going on here. It can be a little confusing. And um, we are just going to knit. All right, so let's show you what it looks like to knit in the round. We're just gonna knit all the way around, okay? This is knitting in the round. When you knit in the round and you're doing stack a net stitch, which we're doing, we're just knitting every round. And I'm saying round now instead of row because we are working in the round. So you keep sliding the needles over and you knit all the way across. You might need to turn your work. So um, this is our tail. I'm just gonna drop it in there so I don't get confused. And you can see we're approaching 
the beginning of round marker here. And all you do is you keep knitting. And it's gonna get a little weird looking as you get towards the end of the round because you've, you'll have another gap where you had that first underarm stitch where we picked up and knitted. So there's gonna be a little bit of a gap right there. Just keep knitting, okay? And this is a good time to pull, to tighten it a little bit, okay? We're gonna slip the marker and keep knitting, okay? Just keep knitting. You can go back, like I said, and, and pull on the, um, the tail that you started knitting with to tighten it up a bit, but it'll get a little bit easier as you continue knitting. And like I said, we will go back and seam up those armhole gaps at the end with scrap yarn and our tapestry needle. All right, so now you're gonna continue. The pattern tells you to continue knitting stockinette stitch, which is just continue, when you're working in the round, stockinette is just knitting every single round. We're not knitting um, back and forth flat, so there's no need to do any purls. We're just gonna keep knitting in the round for the length that the pattern calls for. All right, so I just wanted to show you what the sleeve starts to look like as it starts to grow, as you continue to do stock in that stitch, you'll see some of the gaps at the armholes again, will come back and seam that up. So those will go away, but this is how your sweater will start to look, how the sleeve will start to look as you continue with stock in that stitch. One thing on arm length. So when you knit a, um, a sweater like this, it, you can definitely try on the sweater as you go now to decide how long you want the sweater to be. So our um, cuff will add about three inches. So um, if you try this on, make sure you're adding on three inches for the cuff. So if you want the sleeve to be a total of 18 inches, um, subtract three inches to get 15 inches. And then when you um, try this, when you try this on, you can see a 15 inches 15 plus three works for you. If you want it to be an inch shorter or an inch longer, just adjust accordingly, but know that the cuff will add about three inches. We're gonna be doing the cuff the same way um, as the bottom ribbing. However, we will be using smaller needles to create a tighter cuff. So I will show you what that will look like once we get here, but I just wanted to show you how the sweater is looking as we continue stuck in that stitch. All right, so now I have knit to the pattern, um, the pattern and the size that I'm following says to knit the sleeve length to 14 inches. So I am at 14 inches here from the underarm. And the then we will switch needles to start the ribbing. So we didn't switch needles to do the one by one ribbing um, on the body, but we will do that for the sleeves. This just allows for the cuff to be a little bit tighter. Sometimes um, patterns will have you decrease stitches to get that tighter cuff. But again, to keep things simple, we are just going to switch needles and bind off. So by switch needles, do our ribbing and bind off. So I am at the end of the row here and we will, to switch the needles, we're gonna knit um, one round in all stockinette stitches. So we'll slip here, okay? And we will um, switch our needles. Now to switch our needles, we are just gonna start knitting with that second needle. So this is my nine millimeter 16 inch knitting needle. So we're gonna knit one round in these needles and then we will move to our one by one ribbing. Now it can be tricky because you've got your marker here and you don't want your marker to fall off. So I tend to pull this needle through. We're gonna be knitting all of our stitches over onto this needle. So I'm gonna pull this a little bit so we don't lose our stitches. 
So we're just gonna knit across one row to get our needle switched, and then we will start our one by one rib on these smaller needles to get our cuff to be a little bit tighter. All right, so I'm gonna just keep pulling this, moving the stitches over, being careful not to lose that marker. If you lose the marker, it's okay. If the marker falls off, you can just put it back on when you join, oh, see, there it goes, I lost it. <laughs> um, you'll know when you're at the end of the round because you will be at the last stitch on the larger needles. So you can just put the marker back on. So again, we are taking all the stitches off of this bigger needle by knitting them onto the smaller needles. So you'll have your new needle on in your right hand and the old needle in the left hand, and you're working your way across the sleeve on the new needle. All right. So we are at the end of this round and now we have all of our stitches. So this, we are done with this larger 16 inch circular needle. So I'm gonna put that aside. I am going to grab my stitch marker and we will now begin the one by one rib on the smaller needles. So that one by one rib is knit one, purl one. Now remember we had 28 stitches, so we have an even number of stitches. So we should, since we're starting with a knit stitch, we should end on a purl stitch. So we're just gonna knit and purl all the way across. And um, if things start to get awkward, if you start turning your work, you can just turn it around if it gets too twisted and keep working. So knit, purl, knit, purl. So we're continuing to knit it in the round. This is the first time we're knitting and purling. We're doing our one by one rib in the round. So, um, same rules apply. We're gonna just keep knitting and purling when we get to the end of the round. You'll see that we'll just knit one, purl one again. You're gonna knit the stitch, knit stitches and purl the purl stitches. So just keep track, make sure you're knitting and purling consistently across and you're not doing like two knit stitches or two purl stitches, you'll be able to see. You'll be able to see knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, you can see that loop pops out on the purl stitches. So I can tell here, I just ended with a knit stitch, so I'm gonna keep purling, then knit, then purl, then knit, purl, knit. I'm at the end of the round here, so we're gonna slip that marker and you can see I should just knit now at the beginning of the round, knit, purl, knit, purl. So that's how that works. And for this as well, you're going to do the one by one rib, the knit one, purl one for three inches, and then we will bind off. So continue the knit one, purl one. And again, as you work your way around, and you push the, the stitches over, your work might start to get a little twisted here. So when I'm like halfway around, um, I'll show you here. When I'm approximately halfway around or things start to feel like they're getting a little twisted with the sleeve, I mean this getting twisted, I just turn the work and continue the knitting and purling for the rib stitch. And like I said, some sweater patterns at the cuff will have you decrease stitches. 
Um, some sweater patterns will have you decrease evenly throughout the sleeve to have it gradually get thinner. There's lots of different ways to do sleeve shaping. Trying to keep things simple, but I also want this to look good. So um, that's why we're using the smaller needle, but we don't have too many decreases. This cuff won't be like crazy tight around your wrist, which um, that's just how I have this sweater designed. All right. So continue the one by one rib for three inches and then we will bind off in the pattern. All right, I have finished knitting three inches of the one by one rib for the cuff. And you can see that it's the, when you knit um, the rib stitch, it um, pulls the work together a little bit more. So we've got a nice little um, decrease for the cuff as you can just see my stitch marker just flew off so when we're ready to bind off you can remove the stitch marker and now we're going to bind off in that one by one rib i'm just going to show you how to do that again so we knit one and we purl one and we remove the last stitch it can be a little bit more confusing when you're knitting in the round because we will still have these previous stitches from the end of the round on but the same thing applies you knit one and then slip that stitch over the other stitch on the needle. So now I'm gonna purl and remember, keep it kind of loose here so it's not too tight. But we're knitting one, purling one, and then binding off a stitch each time. And I'll just show you what we do when we get to the end of the round. So like I said, um, you can make sleeve lengths um, pretty customized to the length that you need, the length that you want. If you want it to be a little bit more um, three-fourths length, you can go a little bit shorter on the sleeves. If you want it to be a little bit longer, you can continue on. Um, but you'll get to know as you continue to make more sweaters. Um, the sleeve length you like. You can make a, you know, another version of this cardigan with more of a cropped sleeve if you want. Um, all right, so I am just continuing to knit and purl and binding off a stitch as I go. more stitches to the end and when you bind off um, at the cuff here in the round you're gonna have a bit of a gap at the end and I'm just gonna show you how to kind of connect the beginning and end of round here with your yarn all right so I have more stitches here so when you are at the last stitch and you have one stitch left remember we're going to cut the yarn leaving a bit of a tail so we can weave in the ends and you're just going to pull that yarn through okay and as you can see now we have a bit of a gap So that's where we started to bind off. Here's where we ended. And I usually just take my needle and pull the yarn in front and get the yarn back through here, that loop. And that just kind of seams it up a little bit more. And then we're gonna weave, we're gonna weave this tail in in a little bit. I'll show you how to do that. But I like to do that right at the beginning because it just makes everything look a little bit better. All right, so we finished, we just completed one sleeve. 
I showed you how to do one sleeve of our sweater. I'll show you how it's all looking now. I started with the left sleeve. Okay, let's get this all unfolded here so you can see what the whole thing is looking like. And, all right, we've got one sleeve, we've got our front here, and then we still have our stitches on our waist yarn for the other sleeve, the right sleeve. So now you're gonna go back and finish the right sleeve or the second sleeve and complete that just as you did the first sleeve. All right, so we are going to use that six, go back and use that 16 inch circular needle, that US 17 size, and you're gonna pick up all these stitches off the waist yarn, pick up your underarm stitches, and um, knit stuck in that stitch for the length the pattern calls for. And I will see you back here to then complete the collar. All right, so now we are at the point, and I have this kind of tilted to the side here so it all fits on the camera. We have both sleeves finished, okay? Both sleeves are finished. Now we're gonna work on the collar. And the collar is worked by picking up stitches along the right front, three stitches for every four rows. I'll show you what that means in a minute. So we're gonna pick up stitches all along this side to the top, all across the back, and then all down the left front, okay? So you need a long needle, you need to grab your US 17 40 inch needle because all of these stitches are gonna be on one circular needle. So we'll be working back and forth in that rib stitch, but we're gonna be working all across the garment this way. So we're gonna start on the right side of the work, right side meaning we see stockinette, and then we're gonna be on the bottom of the right front. So if you're looking at the sweater or if you have the sweater on, this is the right side. You're on your right half of your body. Okay, so I'm now I'm gonna show you how to pick up and knit these stitches um, on the right front up to the back and then down the left front. So when the pattern says to pick up three stitches for every four rows, I'll show you exactly what that means. So we are gonna be inserting our needles. If you look closely, you can see these individual spaces for each row, okay? We're gonna be inserting our needle into these spaces and picking up yarn. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so three stitches for every four rows. So if we just look at this quickly here, you see this is four row. these are four rows. One, two, three, four. So we're gonna get three stitches in those four rows. And you do that by doing this. We're gonna join our yarn. We're gonna insert our, insert our hook in the very first stitch there and pull this through and make sure you leave enough yarn um, to weave in and you want to make sure you're not pulling this yarn all the way through so you just got to leave it this will be a little loose and you'll be able to pull it okay so that's our first stitch in the first row now we're going to be putting the second stitch in the second row by inserting the needle here okay yarn over and pull this through so now we have two stitches now we need to skip this third row and get a stitch into the fourth row so we will have three stitches for every four rows. So insert your needle, yarn over, and pull through. So now we have three stitches for those four rows. And again, this first stitch might be a little loose, but we will tighten that as we go. So we're going to keep doing three stitches for every four rows. And this is how I like to count. One, two, skip, skip this one here, and four. I'm sorry, into the you st third stitch into the fourth row. Okay, so now you can see we're picking up and knitting all of these stitches along the right front. So it's one, two, 
we're gonna skip this row here and get our third stitch into the next one. So that's three stitches for every four rows. And you're gonna keep working all the way up to the back. Okay, I'm gonna skip that next stitch and go into the next one. All right, so you're gonna keep doing this all the way across and it'll get a little tight because you'll have a lot of stitches on. But I do wanna mention, once you get to the back, the back, see your raglan increase? You're gonna work all the way up the front across the sleeve here. I'm sorry, you're gonna work all the way up the right front. And once you get to the sleeve, you're gonna pick up this is our original cast on stitches. You're gonna pick up a stitch for each of these stitches along here. So along the sleeve and the back and along the other sleeve. And then once you get past this raglan row and you're on the left front that goes all the way back down, you're gonna do three, you're gonna do um, three stitches for every four rows, okay? All right, so now I've worked all the way, I've picked up and knitted um, three stitches for every four rows along the right front. Now I'm right to where the left sleeve started and where the, we'll go across the back and the um, left sleeve. But you, and you can see our cast on edge here. This is where we cast on. So this is where the sweater um, reaches the top basically and um, you're gonna now pick up and knit every cast on stitch here so we're gonna just insert and pick up our need and pick up a stitch in every cast on stitch here so that's one and you can see the stitch get a little closer here see the V you're gonna want to pick up a stitch in every V across the sleeves in the back so it's here and into the next one and next one all the way across till you get to the left front, which starts right after that cast on stitch ends right there. All right, now I'm finished picking up stitches across the back and the left sleeve, and now I'm gonna work on picking up stitches down the left front the same way. So it's three stitches for every four rows and you can find it. it can be a little tricky to get started here but we're gonna go one two skip the third and into the fourth and you continue that all the way down one two skip three one two, skip, three. All right, now you can see I have picked up and knitted all of the stitches along the right front, the right sleeve, the back, the left sleeve, and the left front. So everything's connected now onto um, our 40 inch knitting needle. Now we ended over here with the left front. So we need to now, and we started on the right side. So now we'll be working on the wrong side. Okay, so for our first um, knit one, purl one, we're actually, since we're starting on the wrong side, we're gonna start with um, a purl. Okay, and so I just wanna let you know that everybody's gonna have a different number of stitches. So the pattern isn't gonna call to tell you, isn't gonna tell you how many stitches you should have for the knit one, purl one. Now. I'm trying to keep this pattern as simple as possible. So basically, just knit one and purl one. I'm not making sure you end with the same stitch on both sides, but 
the key is knit one, purl one, knit the knit stitches, purl the purl stitches. So I am gonna start with a um, purl since we're on the wrong side. So purl one, knit one. And what I also wanna tell you is when you're working with these stitches for this first row, um, the stitches will be a little backwards so because we picked up and knitted. So make sure you're inserting the needle this way into the work. Okay, so I'm knitting one and purling one. Knit one, purl one, but we're going into the work a little differently so those, so those stitches aren't twisted. And this is how I do it. Um, some people do twist those stitches but I think it looks better if you do it this way. So we're just gonna go into the work a little differently. Normally you go in this way, but because we picked up and knitted, things are um, a little backwards here. Okay, so we're going to knit and purl, just going in that way. Let's show you a little closer, knit, so you will continue knitting the knit stitches and purling the purl stitches just like you did in the other rib um, until you get to um, three inches as well and then you will bind off the same way you did for the bottom we're working back and forth so you won't be in the round um, but I just wanted to show you how to pick up and knit the stitches for the collar and then also just show you how to get this first row started for the knit one, purl one, one by one rib for the collar. Okay, but everything else now, you're gonna be working back and forth. See, when you pick up everything, it gives the sweater a really nice edge. All right, so just continue to knit one and purl one with these stitches that you've picked up. And then once you're done with this row, you'll continue on. Everything will be normal. You'll knit one, purl one the same way you did before. It's just this first row that's a little tricky once you've picked up stitches. All right, so you're just gonna work all the way across. All right, I have finished that first knit one, purl one row. And again, like the the first stitch might be a little loose, um, but you can just pull it and then we're gonna turn the work over and it does get a little awkward because we're dealing with so many stitches and the sweater is kind of big at this point. Um, but I just wanna show you what it looks like on the right side now. Um, I did end up, ending with a purl on the wrong side at the end. So I will start with um, a knit stitch on the right side. You can tell that we have knit purl because of the little loop that's up there. So again, we're just knitting the knit stitches and purling the purl stitches here. So I'm knitting, purling, and again, we are continuing this until this collar measures just about three inches and then we will bind off in the knit one purl one the same way we did um, for the bottom ribbing on the body. All right, so this will start to grow and that's what it looks like. And again, I know it can be a little awkward to knit all these stitches around this part of the sweater, but it creates a really seamless collar and it looks really nice. So do your best here and I will see you after you're done binding off for the collar. And then the last step will be to just seam up any underarm gaps and weave in our ends. All right, so I wanted to show you guys where I am with the collar ribbing. So I am binding off on the right side now. Um, and I'm just, I'm just about to finish um, the collar in this knit one, purl one um, ribbing. And I'm binding off in the knit one, purl one ribbing as I go here. And I'm about to finish off. And this is pretty much almost the last step here. 
Um, once we're done with this, here we go. Last stitch. I'm gonna cut the yarn, leave a tail to weave in, pull it up, and I am now done with the collar. So guys, this sweater looks pretty amazing. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to um, weave in the ends and close the gap. So we're gonna close the gap first and then I'm gonna weave the end in. And you can apply the same concept to weave in all of your ends throughout the entire sweater. So what we're gonna do is get to our, the, where we need to weave in the ends and there's lots of different ways to do this. There's no wrong way or right way to do this. I just like to um, go through the little areas around the hole, like up and down, and just close the gaps up like this. All right, and you pull and you can make sure it's closed up to where you want it. And then now to weave in the ends, you're just gonna follow a stitch around. So I am gonna follow this loop here. I'm gonna go around and back up to follow the way that the stitch goes. And just going to Weave the ends in like that. All right, and now we just cut it. And that end is woven in. Once you have woven in all of your ends, seamed up your armhole gaps, you are done with your cardigan. And now it is ready for you to wear and enjoy. Good job, guys.